All right. Hi, everyone. How are you? Good, good, good. Good to see a good crowd today. And, and super happy that you know, we at least get a decent time slot instead of in the evening, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> but very happy to see, all you, see you all. Uh, again, just uh, thank you for joining in. Uh, we're going to, you know, we're, uh, we'll just introduce ourselves very quickly. Matt, did you want to go first? And then... Sure. Hi, my name is Matt, and I'm one of the co-chairs for the Technical Advisory Group on Observability. And I'm Alolita Sharma. I am also a co-chair for the TAG, work closely with Matt, and our uh, technical lead for the uh, TAG observability also. Uh, he's around someplace, Vartek, uh, but uh, he might be, he has a tag right, uh, he has a talk right after, so he might be preparing for it. But um, just to welcome everyone, thank you for coming in. Please, again, I, we would like to see this as an interactive discussion, uh, because as you know, the tag is like a community end user group, you know, and a user group where all of us together working on different projects, different open source projects, you know, kind of talk about observability, what are some of the latest projects that are ongoing in the CNCF space, but also, you know, what we can introduce as areas that are important to uh, developers and users alike, and, and also work closely with the projects to make that, help them make that happen. All right, so I think just a sneak peek wanted to call out in, uh, your attention to a super cool logo that we actually finally adopted this year. It's the owl. And Matt has a very interesting story about that later on in the talk. But uh, again, just wanted to uh, call this out because, you know, owl is known for wisdom and observation. They're keen observers. So uh, I think it's befitting to, to the, uh, as the logo of the tag. Um, just wanted to start off with the charter of the TAG. As you know, the CNCF has several uh, technical groups, which, again, work very closely with the TOC, um, which is the Technical Oversight Committee for the CNCF. And the charter of the observability TAG group is, again, to uh, foster, review, and grow the ecosystem of open source projects for observability. And that comes in different shapes and forms. As you have seen, many of you might have seen the landscape graph. Uh, there are several categories of observability projects, uh, ranging from monitoring to logging to uh, actual cost, and cost management and several other categories. Uh, if you haven't seen it, again, go to landscape.cncf.io, and it's a really nice uh, you know, uh, chart of all the projects open source projects within CNCF's domain, and also in other allied projects that work together and collaborate. So going back to the charter, again, uh, we work very closely with several of the projects to um, help grow the ecosystem and create awareness. We also identify and report gaps in the, uh, you know, if there are user requests, so we are seeing and great um, you know, development of, an, of a cool project or a cool feature set, which is then aligning with an observability project, again, continuing to grow the project uh, CNCF portfolio. Share patterns and good practices for observability. All of, you know, many of us are working in the space where we actually build tools as well as build solutions and pipelines for observing our systems. And be able to, being able to share good practices that many of our teams have identified or developed or what works for specific use cases, this is a forum to do so. Um, we also work a lot with uh, education and uh, really you know, inviting different speakers to be able to share their knowledge and we all learn from that. And also providing a vendor neutral venue for uh, validation discussion of project features and introducing uh, sometimes different uh, features that then go and land up in different projects. And last but not least, working closely with the TOC on sandbox incubation and graduation reviews for uh, different projects that are going through the CNCF uh, graduation process. And uh, our role, again, is very much to provide feedback and be able to provide uh, user feedback just to help the TOC. The TOC is the final 
uh, you know, reviewer and, and decision maker here. So with that said, again, I'd like to kind of move on and just highlight the CNCF structure. Many of you may have already seen this slide. Uh, for those of you who ha uh, know, you know are, and are deeply involved, there's a governing board for the CNCF, the Technical Oversight Committee that I referred to, and I think Alina's here, who is our, uh, she used to be on the TOC, she's now on the governing board. Uh, and uh, there are the end user, you know, community work groups, which are now uh, tags, right? And, and as you can see, there are different, you know, uh, areas that kind of are focuses for each of these types of groups. And, uh, and the end result, which I think is not called out here, but should be, is the projects themselves, right? Where we all work on the open source projects and, uh, you know, form and are members of these different groups. All right. So with that said, I want to kind of uh, hand it over to Matt to step through some of the 2022 accomplishments of what we did as a tag team this, this year for observability. And um, here, over to you, Matt. Cool. Hi, everybody. Um, so we thought we would walk through just a few examples, of some of the more notable ones, of the type of activities that, that happen in the technical advisory group in, in our meetings. And as, Al, as Alalita mentioned, you know, we are not, uh, as a group, uh, an arbiter or a decider or an approver, right? I, the, the role is really to facilitate um, all of these groups, you know, productively engaging together and driving forward initiatives that make sense and are, and are requisite. So as an example, uh, as you know, as many of you may know, in the Open Telemetry Project, there have traditionally been, you know, three signals, right? Anybody want to guess? <laughs> you know, logs, metrics, traces. Um, uh, at KubeCon EU, uh, just about half a year ago, uh, at the Open Telemetry meeting, uh, you know, some members of the community and others raised uh, an idea that, you know, continuous profiling uh, should be added as a signal type. You know, as I was at EBPF Day uh, a few days ago, uh, and if you've been watching the news or if you're a nerd for profiling in general, you can, there's, there's a huge amount of innovation happening using this quite, uh, this quite old piece of tech that's been, you know, revitalized and used for, for these purposes. So, um, as a tag, the way we could facilitate moving this forward uh, was as follows. Uh, one, you know, a lot of discussion. <laughs> you know, so we started this uh, in the late spring, and throughout the summer, uh, one of the community members, uh, Ryan Perry, uh, CEO of a company called Pyroscope, um, uh, organized and orchestrated about a dozen meetings for anyone who wanted to come. You know, the first meeting had, I think, 45 or 50 people uh, across a broad swath of, you know, end users to vendors to uh, nerds. <laughs> I am one. Um, uh, and we talked about, you know, what does this look like, right? And there are different use cases. You, you know, for, as a small example, you know, some teams or some, some projects might want to collect profiling data at the edge on lower powered devices, uh, you know, and only collect the data and stream it back, you know, to some back ends that will then do analysis. Whereas other devices or projects might want to do the exact opposite. They might, might want to be doing aggregation and processing of profiling data at the edge and then, you know, transmitting quite a lot, a lot less. So in, in, in figuring out, you know, what should it be? What should the proposal be? Um, you know, those kinds of discussions were, were, were facilitated by the tag. Um, but really in the background, you know, like the, we're a facilitator or a facilitator, not a dictator. Uh, so the, the general process was by midsummer, uh, you know, a lot of these ideas started coalescing. Uh, so we started a, a document uh, and then by mid August, we had a vision document to say, Hey, here's what uh, a group of folks that have come together that are interested in this topic. You know, we have, a, we have reached consensus on uh, what it is we want to do. So once we, we had that, we could go to the open telemetry group, right, as a, as a group and, and open and OTEP, an open telemetry enhancement proposal. Uh, they're modeled after the KEPs, the Kubernetes enhancement proposals as a process. Uh, and so that was put out for community review. The, the real difference, and I think where the tag can help is, um, you know, anyone can propose an OTEP and, and there are many of them and people do um, as an individual. But, you know, if you can come together and say, hey, we 20 or 30 people who, 
you know, have various expertise in this area, we all agree that this is sort of a great path forward and a vision. So that, that gives more weight to the proposal, right? Because now Open Telemetry says, well, they're not proposing a specific implementation. You know, this is just a vision document that says, like, here's what we want to accomplish. And there's lots of ways we can do it. Maybe we can do it multiple ways at the same time for different folks, but this is what we're going to engage in. And so just recently, I believe in September, that was merged. Right? And so now, as part of Open Telemetry, there is an actual initiative to go add continuous profiling data as a signal uh, type, to make a, a fourth signal, if you will. Um, and so at the Open Telemetry meeting yesterday, uh, where you know they're typically at KubeCons, uh, this was a topic, and the next topic was, okay, well, what happens next? And the community comes together and agrees that, okay, we're going to go do some deep work on this and actually start implementing some things. And we don't all decide you know, how it's going to happen, but we decide that it is something that people are engaging in, and, and it, it leaves plenty of room for folks to come in and engage in the process. Right? So that's really the point. So that's one, one of the things that we did uh, over the course of this year, uh, or that we kind of softly allowed to happen, <laughs> or, or facilitated in some ways, but really it was a community that did it. But the tag was a place where they could come in that neutral setting and, and have those discussions in the first place, right, that were neutral. So. Yeah, and, and just to add to that, you know, again, often there are many areas of, you know, observability which intersect with other disciplines or, you know, related areas. Security is one of them, um, you know, networking is another one of them, operating systems and container, you know, storage is another area. So, um, you know, that, and then we'll dig into this a little bit more later in the, in the slides where, cross collaboration across tags in terms of discussions and you know really vetting out the use cases for a particular proposal happens a fair bit and and it really is you know the space where you can kind of think through different ideas uh, and see you know which those uh, use what use cases they are and you know what makes sense to introduce as a particular feature then that you can take up to a particular project and and submit a proposal so this is a good use case of you know what like with profiling which is a cool thing that's going on all over many projects at, at uh, cncf you see these different features kind of landing in uh back as feature proposals into the project which happens to be hotel in this case um the second uh, initiative i think that we wanted to uh, highlight on is cortex mm -hmm. so did you want to dig through so, that, uh, that? Yeah, just brief show of hands non-binding who's familiar with cortex the project just so I know. Okay, I would say that looks like maybe 20% of the room. So uh, you, fifth of the room, bear with me. Um, Cortex is, in short, a durable, uh, a back-end durable storage for time series metrics. Uh, some of the basic at a high level, it's multi-tenant. Uh, it's designed to be run in cloud environments on top of you know, S3 or Google Cloud Storage or min.io or some sort of object store. Um, it's designed to be horizontally scalable. Right, so you know, if we need to handle more loads, and and, and most interestingly, I think as well, uh, the read and the write path. So the write path being, you know, ingesting metrics from all of the various sources, um, uh, being sent to it, and the read path being querying data out. The read and the write path are independently horizontally scalable. Right, so you can actually, it's quite a flexible system that was designed to be cloud native from the get go. Um, uh, all projects kind of evolve over time. Right, uh, and 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 they they have new, <laughs> new new ideas and new folks, and then some folks you know rotate out. So what one of the things that happened uh, with the Cortex project is some of the original the authors and maintainers uh, cycled out of the project to do other things. Right, so the TOC and others were saying, hey, well this is a, a, a you know a lot of people are running this in production today. You know, Cortex is an incubating project, so it's in that that middle zone where it's seriously being run at serious scale. Um, so it's important that the, this, this project remain healthy. And so what could we as a, you know, really, again, we don't have any power, really. Nobody works for us. We're not really in charge of anything. But what can we do to, to help uh, make this, you know, a successful project as it's in our domain to be interested in? Um, and so we, you know, talked about uh, what could be done. Uh, so talk, talking with the project maintainers to say, hey, uh, what, what would help the project, you know, because, and of course, it's contribution. So if you're looking for a place to get down and nerdy with like gRPC, time series metrics, um, some really fantastic stuff at scale. Um, I, I don't know if anybody remembers, <laughs> I don't know if anybody remembers when Docker uh, 
last year or two years ago, they started rate limiting unauthenticated Docker pulls. Right? When that happened, our infrastructure where I was working went kind of face planted a little bit. Well, it didn't face planted, it more like paused, but um, you know, we ran HA Prometheus pairs in all of our clusters, right? And so the write ahead logs started to really fill up because you know, the durable storage is down. Uh, and we over provisioned things, so we had like a couple weeks of write ahead log space, really. Uh, disks are cheap. But when everything got turned back on, suddenly our whole infrastructure needed to send Cortex stuff. And again, because we could dynamically, uh, you know, in a pretty easy way, scale up and down stuff, we could scale stuff up and start, you know, bringing back all of the, the back metrics. And at one point, I think it was like two in the morning and we hit like 20 something thousand requests per second, requests per second, rather, requests per second. Um, so, and then, you know, it just handled it just great. So it's a really fun project if you're into distributed systems and time series, they could use your help um, in a variety of roles. So, you know, bringing visibility to that and really kind of helping communicate out to other projects, to the community <laughs> and to the leadership of the CNCF, like this is what's up with the project, you know, and we're, we're going to help them. We can't do it for them, but we're gonna help share in their success, right? Or help facilitate their success. So that's sort of another, type of activity that we do in the, in the group. Cool. So I think we have a third one to talk about as yeah. well. Um, we thought it would be fun to have an observability speaker series, right? So, you know, if we've got people that show up because they want to nerd out and talk about observability, what might they like to hear? Who might they like to hear it from? So uh, we've had two uh, so far and it's almost done processing on YouTube, so by the time you actually maybe see these slides, there'll be a link there. Yeah, it might appear right, <laughs> yeah, right magically. after on um, the CNCF channel. But in September, <laughs> we had uh, Liz, uh, Liz Fong Jones from Honeycomb come and do a talk on uh, you know, hybridized signal types and, and really a lot about how eventing and events really, it's a really cool talk, you should check it out. Um, uh, Yuri, <laughs> from, uh, who, who, as many of you know, had uh, some small part <laughs> you know, to do with, with the Jaeger project. Um, he came and talked about some of his thoughts around observability and tracing and all of that. Uh, and I'll put a link there as a little paper. That they've done a positional paper on uh, schema first uh, application telemetry. Um, so the title is sort of self-describing. It's a fascinating read. And I think he'll be talking about it sometime this week or next. Yeah. Um, so, and then uh, we've got Jonah Cowell coming, uh, who's uh, CEO of logs.io and has been involved in various communities in observability. Uh, he'll be coming to share some thoughts and I don't think we have a title yet, but we will soon. So if you're interested in speaking to the observability community, if you know someone or have a suggestion, reach out on Slack. Um, the process is basically uh, pr pretty lightweight. Uh, so. So, yeah, and, and I think just to add to that, uh, again, the uh, tag sessions, as many of you know, are published on the Google Calendar for CNCF. And, and also, uh, they're typically on the first and third Tuesdays of the month. So, you know, again, at least joining in once a month is a, you know, we'd really love for more folks to join in and have those discussions that then, you know, carry over into the projects themselves and other strategic initiatives and features that you want to see happen, right? So I invite you again to come and speak or you know, come and share your thoughts there. Um, so what, we want to talk next about 2023 and what's next. Again, you know, this is a great time uh, to kind of discuss that because as we go into the next year, typically you know, there are a lot of uh, air a lot of projects that come in, un, uh, you know, interrupt driven, but, but then there's some that we do intentionally and try to plan for. So uh, again, you know, if there are areas that you'd like to see happen, we, this is what we have kind of collected from the different discussions and um, suggestions that folks have made as they've participated in the tag or, uh, you know, there's different feedback that's coming in from different projects. Uh, and, and here are some of the areas that we want to kind of, um, you know, support and make happen uh, and drive forward in the next, in the coming year. And again, if this is just, you know, work in progress, if there are other topics you'd like to cover or see more, you know, work done on, happy to, you know, please, please share. Uh, the first area, of course, as Matt, you know, uh, discussed earlier, 
is profiling. And as you can see that the profiling enhancement proposal for open telemetry landed uh, you know, earlier this month. Uh, but we would like to see more you know, uh, detailed use cases outlined there. And always, you know, as all of us discuss these use cases, kind of taking that feedback back to the project, OTEL, as well as others, right? Working closely with other projects, Cilium and um, other projects that are actually working on EBPF and getting uh, a, a more of a shared vision, if you will, uh, towards that. The uh, second area, which has actually been super interesting in observability, you know, as, as all of us kind of work on complex workflows, uh, building in different observability solutions is graphs, right? Like how do you envision dependencies when you are actually deploying, uh, you know, server-side infrastructure or public cloud infrastructure uh, or even client infrastructure, right? Where uh, there are several interdependencies in the uh, systems that we are, you know, observing, right? And graphs is a great way to envision that. Right, those interdependencies, whether those are uh, learning and, and understanding the different systems and the correlations between them, or even understanding the data that flows across those. And Matt is going to kind of go into a bit more detail on you know, uh, what uh, we are looking at in that space. Another area that um, came up during discussions, and this was something that even Yuri highlighted in his talk um, earlier this month was uh, to look at telemetry data, um, you know, in a, in a more diverse way, right? That is, it's not always about metrics, logs, and traces, as we always hear about, right? That different kinds of telemetry data to tell us about, you know, how are our systems behaving, you know, and, and different types of data gives us that, you know, insight into understanding the pulse and health of the system at any given point in time. And systems can be general, it's a general you know, definition for, it could be an application, it could be a component within an application, or it could be infrastructure itself, whether that's a uh, router or an, you know, um, something that, such as Kubernetes that you're running as a you know, containerized uh, workload on. So um, again, looking at exceptions, as another data type is something that has uh, been in, in discussion now through this year. And it's an interesting idea because, you know, all of us work on applications that run on infrastructure, cloud infrastructure. And um, at the end of the day, we'd like to understand the behavior of systems end to end. That is what, is, what are not only our applications doing, but how is the system interacting with them and what, you know, can we actually deliver the quality of service at the end of the day, which is what observability is all about. So looking at exceptions in more detail is something that's interesting because we want to know about the failures ahead of time in our applications then later. Another area which has been, you know, very much discussed in the, in specific, you know, as, as many of us uh, were run infrastructure on cloud native uh, public cloud or, you know, otherwise. Uh, how many of you use cloud native infrastructure? I hope everyone, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but if you don't, you're probably using something on-prem. But it is a hybrid world today, right? And understanding as more and more of us run applications on public cloud infrastructure, we really need to understand what the usage is, right? And, and how much does your organization really spend in different categories, right? Whether that's engineering, whether that's actual, you know, builds to an actual vendor, or whether that is, you know, again, planning for what kind of growth you need to have for infrastructure in the next year. So cost measurement and understanding the actual usage of systems uh, and system components is also something that observability use cases are starting to look at. And there are several projects within the CNCF observability umbrella that actually address this. A couple of them are open cost as well as cube cost, which many of you may have heard. But having more integration 
across, you know, providing that data through standard observability pipelines is also another area that, you know, is something that people who care about it are looking at. How many of you care about that? Cost. You do, right? Yeah. So, Money. <laughs> mm -hmm. so this should be an interesting one. And again, I invite you to come over to the CNCF, to the TAG meetings, for, uh, so that you know, we can all discuss and actually capture some of these use cases, because I'd like to better define a baseline for what those metrics are, what those traces are, what do we need to collect from an observability standpoint that we can standardize and ta you know, collect in a standardized way, which is then built into the collection mechanisms you know, that you use to be able to pull from infrastructure, right? So that's another area that I think uh, is actually uh, has a lot of, lot of areas we need to can kind of deep dive into. Another area I'd like to kind of call out is correlation across telemetry data signals. And this is, again, an area where sampling, for example, is a you know, specific use case as many of us instrument our applications and enable tracing for those applications. What does correlation mean here? Because how many of you use sampling today? Many of you, right? There's no way that you could handle the kind of cardinality and, and throughput that you get from 100% of tracing turned on or profiling turned on or metrics turned on, even for that matter, or logs, right? So again, in one way or the other, we do do a fair bit of sampling and correlation then understanding, you know, how our data is uh, actually providing the right signals from an observability standpoint is important. So these are some of the initiatives that you know, we've kind of collected feedback on and suggestions, but please, again, if you see there's something missing, uh, let's talk about it. Other groups and activities I just wanted to call out before we switch over uh, to Matt is um, we actually seeded and observed uh, Kate's uh, work group in, within the tag where it is actually looking at uh, Kubernetes observability specifically. And there's some collaboration that we have done with the instrumentation group, SIG in the Kubernetes uh, group, but also at the same time uh, kind of digging in into some of the demos and implementation use cases of, you know, what does that mean? So again, anyone who's interested in getting involved in that, please, you know, please join in. Um, secondly, we're looking for tech leads. If you want to lead a specific area, you know, of, of, uh, you know we, we do a fair bit of analysis tech and as well as technical white papers. So if you are interested in working in any of those areas, please join in. Um, and it is very simple. It's like, you know, we really invite everybody to kind of, you know, use this as your group, user group. Um, and then again, also contribute to the tag. We'd like to see some reference tools, recommendations, uh, and there is a GitHub repo for the CNCF, uh, the tag observability under the CNCF domain, which you can you know, come and take a look at. There are several issues that you could work on, uh, and you can also ask for requests you know, there very easily. Um, and that said, again, I want to turn it over to you, Matt, so you wanted to kind of dig into cool. these. Um, okay, so um, these are some challenging questions that are kind of hard uh, to answer. Right, uh, I don't have time uh, to go through all of them, uh, but you know, uh, <laughs> you know, some of them are a little cheeky but real, right? You know, our GitHub stars and you know popularity and market cap actually correlated. Um, a more interesting one uh, might be, you know, I'm a say you're an IT decision maker, like who, who's had to pick what open source projects to work with, right? Let's say you wanted to say, answer the question. Well, before I go dive in with my teams or by myself uh, and and put this project into, you know, something that is directly revenue impactful, uh, who all contributed to it and who did they work for? And many of those companies are probably like very small. So who funded those companies and what else did they fund? Show me clusters, right? That will make most relational database systems just kind of weep. Um, it's more like a social networking question that you really need graphs to help uh, reason on. Or, you know, I'm running even not very big, not even that much of a cluster in terms of load, but there's still thousands of pods, say, right? Uh, what CVEs came out this morning and which of my workloads uh, are they in? And I'm doing, say, canaries or A-B testing type thing, and I probably have a bunch of different versions of a bunch of different things running, 
right? And the transitive dependencies alone get you to the scale of, you know, we kind of need a graph to efficiently answer questions like that. Um, there are more, but in, in, in the interest of time, um, I want to fast forward a little bit uh, to the next slide. Yeah. Um, so uh, over the summer, we've kind of launched a project. Uh, it's nascent. Um, and we've done a good deal of work around project planning. So there's you know, a whole bunch of issues that are marked as help wanted or good first issue. Um, and there's a lot of room you know, to go innovate. But in a nutshell, uh, it's uh, a project that is making a labeled property graph. So think Neo4j, dgraph, um, Redis graph, you know, any, any type of labeled property graph that speaks open cipher, which is a sort of like SQL for graphs, if you will. Um, and it's a federated super graph made up of a bunch of subgraph modules so that people can work on things independently. Uh, and the subgraph modules are things like CNCF projects and Git, all of it, and Twitter and LinkedIn and uh, CVEs and all packages, <laughs> uh, et cetera, right? So <clears throat> in order to kind of work out the individual data models for these subgraph pieces, that's a job by itself, but having some way to coordinate all this uh, is imperative. So we're using GraphQL as an interface definition language uh, and to get some federation support so we can you know, mix and match these different subgraphs. So you know, we can have some things that are using public data sets, but maybe you want to make a hybrid where you're correlating things that are out in the open with things that are behind your firewalls or that are sensitive. Right? So we wanted to have a project that was sort of um, interactive and, and mix and match. Um, and so some of these collaborations that we could, uh, I could briefly highlight are other examples of the, the opportunity uh, that, that, that you all have <laughs> and your friends too, uh, to engage in the tag because sort of from that position, you can launch off and do all kinds of stuff. So in short, uh, O tag is observability tag, S tag is security tag, right? So the packaging format metadata for, you know, NPM and crates, like, does anyone know, quick show, like, just shout it out, how many, um, how many NPM packages exist? Does anyone know? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> just, just shout it out. We've got like a minute here. Just no guess. one? Thousands. Okay, well on GitHub, there's a little under 1.4 million. Uh, in the public, oh in public, not, I'm sorry, not on GitHub, uh, in NPM, on GitHub proper, 2.14 million uh, when, I, when I looked last. Uh, we're approaching half a million Maven packages. This time last year, there were 40,000 Rust crates. Now there's like 80-something thousand of them. And on and on and on, right? These are big, big possibilities for what could be running on my work, in, in my workload because something pulled in, something pulled in, something pulled in, something that pulled this in. Right, and I might not even know because Dependabot didn't tell me that my package.json pulled it in, but something pulled in, something pulled in, something, and I have a bug or, or, or a risk. Uh, so collaborating with domain experts in, in, in tag security to define what those graph data models are is an example of the kind of cross-tag collaboration where we can leverage domain experts from different areas. Uh, another uh, is the Business Value Subcommittee. You might not know them by, by their name, that name, but it's glossary.cncf.io, right? That's a bunch of definitions. They're doing other stuff like providing updated views of the CNCF landscape uh, that are augmented with category information, right? So what projects are similar to this? Or I want to use this GPL thing. What's similar to it, right? That's the kind of recommender systems that we can build with graph tech um, or graph data science. Um, and sort of the, the mother of all Rolodex is really, uh, you, know, uh, you know, sometimes there are so many working groups and so many tags. Uh, in the CNCF alone, uh, you know, that just keeping track of who's who and who's been elected to what is a challenge sometimes. But when you zoom out a little bit to the to the entire Linux Foundation set of landscapes, uh, you know, if the CNCF graph, if the CNCF ecosystem in whole is a graph, um, you can almost think of all the la landscapes in aggregate as a hypergraph, or, or you know, where nodes exist in multiple graphs. The, the point being, those other organizations have their own types of user groups, their own tags, but they're called something else. Right, so we definitely don't have time to cover it, but you know, if you build ontologies, right, the kind of, uh, an ontology in short is uh, what are the kinds of things that are in a graph and how do they relate to each other, uh, you know, as classes of things. Well, now we can start to identify similar groups that might be called differently, structured differently, but are looking at the same topics. For example, all the Kubernetes SIGs or any of the other dozen landscapes that the Linux Foundation manages that are not the CNCF, but have our colleagues in them, right? So. Um, I'm being told we need to go. Uh, there's some other work that, uh, other examples of, you know, collaborating around security use cases. And I'll just, the last one, kind of, I don't need to go into, but I've, I've, I've 
I've made implications to it or inferences to it, uh, supply chain security. Um, just understanding what's running. You know, much of the work in observability, I'll, I'll close by saying, uh, has been all around observing workloads, but we need to also think systemically about what's running in general. Um, and owls, why owls? <laughs> it's not the Overwatch League, although that's an excellent guess for me in particular. Um, <laughs> owls fly softly. They have little they have little feathers on their leading wings. So, you know, Heisenberg, there's a tie in there. You know, we want to observe things without making too much noise while doing it. Um, but I can assure you, Matt's going to do a different presentation. Yeah, We're this is a, Talking uh, about owls. Binocular vision, <laughs> it's cool. Um, their ears are offset like this. So sound hits their skulls just a little bit differently. <laughs> so they can directionally tell where things are coming from. Again, sort of an observational thing. Um, and they have grippy feet and talons. You know, if you've, I'm guessing most of the people in this room have had the experience of digging into a bug or, or something that's not quite working right, and you just don't let go once you pull, pull the thread, right? Owls are that way when they're getting what they want. So um, that's about it. You can find us here. We meet the first and third Tuesdays of every month. Yes. Uh, hope to see you at our next meeting. All are welcome. Thanks. And again, you know where to find us, so please give us your uh, yeah, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I thought we were being queue. kicked out. Yeah. Uh, it's, we are slightly over time. We learned a lot about observability and owls. If you have one question, we have time for one question. <laughs> Only one okay, question. you can ask one tough question. So. Stump the chunk, Yes. Hi, Matt. Um, Hello, there are a lot of projects in the CNCF tied to the ingestion of data, telemetry data. Yes. And comparatively fewer on the consumption, uh, the end user side. I'm kind of curious as you look through the gaps in your portfolio, is that a priority for your group or? No, I think, I think that's a great suggestion because you're right that you know, there, isn't, there is a, a kind of an imbalance there, right? And, and definitely uh, let's talk about it because I think that there are several storage solutions as well as analysis you know, plus storage solutions, because I think you know, when you're looking at different types of data, uh, is there a single storage solution today? And there probably isn't, right? So again, uh, but I'd like to welcome you to kind of maybe yeah. join in for and one the, of the tag sessions and we can yeah. chat. And another brief observation too to augment that um, I should, uh, is you know, open telemetry is really, you know, open census and open tracing merged a little while ago. And now we have open telemetry which is really focusing on a number of things, but primarily the collection of telemetry, right? And that's all fairly recent. And so like, as we, as we kind of shift our focus, if you will, as a community, now that we've kind of got, you know, language independent ways to collect data in a non crazy way. And then with the, you know, the collector or other mechanisms, you know, handle it and get it to a place we can do that analysis. Maybe like some of those bright minds and coffee induced <laughs> nights, um, you know, will be focused on, on exactly what you say. Like now that we have all this, how do we juggle it? How do we analyze, how do we analyze it? How do we slice it, dice it, all of that? So. I think it is an astute observation, though, that there has been a disproportionate, you know, view on the collection side. But I would think that's going to change, um, as an observer, <laughs> right? So. But thank you again, everyone, and uh, see you at the tag meetings. Yeah, <laughs> we're around here too.